What is going on, guys? It's Gospel Gamer here. Back on a new game. We dropped Yakuza 6, and unfortunately, it wasn't very popular. Um, and I don't think personally it worked for my style. So you get to enjoy some voice acting from me. So we're going to play some Chaos Child. I have just realised I can't hear a fucking thing. Okay. Nice little computer there. So, I don't have a huge amount of knowledge about this game. All I know is it's a visual novel style game. From about two years ago, three years ago even. November 6th, 2009 AD. 10.28am. It can, it can I almost said it can be without warning. It came without warning. My penis. <laughs> oh dear. I'm going to have to actually turn this up because I have no idea if there's audio. At least it doesn't seem that way. I don't want to interrupt any voice acting because that would be rude of me. Hello. Oh. No, they died. Poor helicopter pirate, pilot. It was a magnitude 7.8 earthquake with an epicenter directly under the city. This disaster reduced one of Tokyo's busiest downtown areas to nothing in a single night. Fuck me. That's not good. That's a lovely building. The high-rise buildings that have birthed so many trends and fads collapsed as if only up... As if, as if only? Where did I get only? Where did I get that from? As if giving up on their role in society. Black fire spread throughout the city. As individuals fell into the grip of the crowd psychology, their terror was magnified. Combined... All of these things took many lives. Wait, I read that line completely wrong again. <laughs> the final death toll was 3,851. The final number of injured, 30,927. This event would later be known as the Shibuya Earthquake. I'm not going to lie. For some reason, I, I, I wouldn't have expected that to be the obvious name. <laughs> Ah, the earthquake that only happened in Shibuya. Even in all that destruction, people still suffered the most in their hearts. Some who had lost their families came together to share new resolve, while others who had been forced to watch their friends die were driven by guilt to take their own lives. Pretty dark! As a baby was miraculously reunited with its parents after 72 hours, a child in an evacuation shelter asked her dad, When's mommy coming home? He had no answer. Some of the wounded made it to hospitals by looking at real-time updates on the web. Others saw people on the internet talking about the disaster as if it were a movie and were driven mad. A homeless man was saved from malnutrition by an organised volunteer group, but at the same time a middle school boy punched a self-centred volunteer who'd come to Shibuya to find himself in the face. It was the first time in that boy's life had ever, that he'd ever been violent. Fuck me, reading that one's hard. The psychological toll was incredible, and many of the survivors would later manifest symptoms similar to that associated with PTSD. The young were hit the hardest, and before long, the cause of those symptoms were given the name Chaos Child Syndrome. Sy syndrome? Syndrome. Rebuilding happened at a feverish pitch never seen before. It felt inappropriate to say hang in there, but people felt like someone had something, someone, somebody had to do something, fuck me, words are really difficult today. Somebody had to do something. A new slogan, Shibuya, city reborn, and no amount of money or manpower was spared in aiding this endeavour. The whole town was, oh god, I missed that. In private... A leader of redevelopment efforts said, This may sound unkind, but this frenzy feels like a town bur burying its grief by holding a festival. Building codes are rigorously evaluated with an eye towards earthquake engineering. Perhaps in an effort to emphasise the city's safety, security cameras were put all over the town. Shibuya would become a place where everyone could live in peace. But at the same time, a rumour began to spread about the earthquake. Something about this earthquake doesn't make sense. There were no aftershocks and the damage had spread in a strange way. 
Harajuku and Ibizu, areas only a kilometre away from Shibuya suffered few casualties and even fewer collapsed buildings. This damage pan had never been observed in any prior earthquake and so more and so, and so more than a few pundits claim the Shibuya earthquake must have been artificial. More than anything, some of the survivors all said the same things. I saw a white light. I heard a sound like a ringing in my ears. Too many people experienced this for anyone to laugh it off, but no cause of the phenomena was ever found. It was, some, it was just more evidence to those who believe that something about the earthquake had been wrong. Then, six years after the strange earthquake in 2015, something else was about to attract attention in the reborn city of Shibuya. My penis. I thought that was going to be an opening. It was just a tile card. September 7th, 2015, Sunday night. Okay, I'm going to take three minutes for questions. Good to it. I don't know who that is, but I'm going to give him that voice. I don't know why. The second he spoke, the comment box started to fill. Yuma Otani, Otani, fuck me, words are hard. Yeah, he's Otani. Watched it for a few seconds and then saw the request, when does Haru tell us she's dating someone? He smiled to himself. Just what he wanted. Most of the requests were about hot actors or cute idols. His audience was so stupid that it was easy to tell exactly what they were going to ask. The problem was always whether the name that came up was someone he knew. That he was a, that was a question of luck and how popular they were. But Haru, her full name Haruko something or other, she was fine. Just a few days ago, he'd forced himself to go to an event he'd rather have skipped and seen it for himself. Yes. Okay. Satisfied, Otani gave, got up to get some snacks, like he always did. He lived in the one-bedroom condo located eight minutes from Shibuya Station. Cost 150,000 yen per month. It had been built after the earthquake, so the furnishings and layout were modern. A little more room would have been nice, but compared to the 40,000 yen per month place he lived in last year, it was heaven. Next year, maybe I'll move somewhere more convenient. At 21 years old, Otani felt satisfied for the first time in his life. In fourth grade, he'd gone big into online gaming and stopped going to school. Eventually, he'd stopped leaving his room altogether. Then he'd gotten addicted to drugs that made him sleepy, but did nothing else. Once, seeing only darkness in his future, he planned to commit suicide. In the chaos after the earthquake six years ago, he finally managed to leave his room, but his family had already given up on him. After he failed his entrance exams, he went to live on his own in Shibuya, and he hadn't spoken to his parents since. As far as they knew, he'd failed the exams three times in a row. In fact, he hadn't even gone to the test for the, after the first time. There wasn't anything he wanted to learn in college, or any companies he wanted to work for badly enough. He had no goal in life at all. How the fuck are you affording such an expensive place with that kind of attitude? Jesus. But things were different now. Maybe our channel does tell the truth sometimes. Guess I'll have some cheese. He took a block of cheap cheese he'd bought at the supermarket out of the fridge. Usually he never ate anything this cheap. But on Nikonia live streaming, it wasn't just what you said. How you looked when you said it was also matters. Otani wasn't a good looking man, let alone a cute girl. He was just a plain old guy. And a plain old guy, not a plain old guy. Jesus, the way I say that, so weird. And so to keep his popular program popular, he needed to make them think that he was poor, barely managing to scrape by, in fact. That's why he kept the area around his PC and the parts of his apartment that you could see within the webcam completely plain. Last month, he finally reached his goal. F <coughs> he finally reached his goal, four thousand viewers. For a man with nothing going for him like Otani, it was completely, extremely unusual, even. <coughs> Don't know why my voice is going weird there. Three months ago, he guessed the winner of a popularity contest of a certain idol group was holding, as well as the number of votes. That must have really paid off. After that, his numbers have been going up steadily. Last month, when his streams had appeared at the top of Nick O'Neill's page, he'd seen a huge increase. Right now, he got above the 4,500, and it was quite possible he'd break 5,000 by the end of the month. 
It was around late last year when he started to wonder about his power. It was a certain rumour that one of Atran's occult boards that made him really start to realise what he had. The name he'd chosen for his stream subtly reflected this. Then I learned that I can see the future. He took out a knife and cut the cheese. There was a strange sound. Mm -hmm. He thought he just imagined it when... Sounded like someone knocking really weirdly. Knock, knock, knock. He heard it again. It was coming from the door. So, oh, fuck me, I misread it. Someone's clearly got to do something, I think he said. Mitsurinko? Huh? Jungle, maybe? Suspicious, he walked towards the door to answer, then checked the clock. It was 11.41pm. Not exactly normal delivery hours. Oh, come on. I'm streaming right now. He tried to ignore it, but... The knocking continued. It was the same rhythm at the same pace. <coughs> As if the visitor's goal wasn't to come inside, but simply make that sound. A tiny fell bit creeped out. He decided to go then... He decided to go to the intercom camera and see who it was, but they realised that they would be pointless. Only the auto-locking door on the first floor had a camera. The door to Atani's room on the fifth floor had an intercom, but no camera. Atani gave up. I meant if only you wanted something, push the intercom button. God damn it! You're Maybe it's a drunk? No, the knocks are too steady for that. And there was no voice yelling at him to open up. <clears throat> He'd seen this door a million times, but suddenly it looked somehow different. Someone he didn't know was on the other side of the wall to banning entry in the middle of the night. Somehow this made the door seem intimidating. Atani thought he might look through the peephole to see who, was out who it was outside. He was then disgusted to find himself too scared to even close the door. To even get close to the door, sorry. Wait, the intercom didn't have a camera, but it did have a microphone. He turned towards the living room so he could use the intercom and find out what they wanted. Atani, it's me. Sorry to come by so suddenly. I don't have a clue who this is. He stopped when he heard that voice. Once I know who what the character looks like, I'll give him a voice. It's me. I'm very sorry to bother you at this hour. Atani tried to remember who the speaker was, but found he couldn't. But from the tone of the voice and the words, they probably weren't a weirdo. When they said I'm sorry, it sounded like they really meant it. <sighs> Atani sighed softly with a release release? With relief, and then realised he was still carrying the knife he'd been using to cut cheese. It suddenly felt stupid to feel nervous. He quickly laid the knife on top of the sink. Hey, hey. You might get myself. Right, right. I'll open it now. Who is it? It's me. Don't you remember? The voice simply repeated itself. But who are you? Otani whispered to himself as he opened the door. Otani narrowed his eyebrows at the people standing there. He looked them up and down and then looked at their faces again. Their eyes met. Who are you guys? What the fuck? Otani suddenly felt a piercing headache. Atani closed his eyes and put his right hand up to his temple. He could feel the blood pounding in his veins through his fingers. He staggered and quickly put the other hand against the wall to keep from falling over. The pain was like the old days when he'd overdosed on antidepressants but much more intense. He grit his teeth again. He he grit his teeth again the pain. What? He grit his teeth again the pain. And dug his nails into the wall that was holding numb. I have no idea what that first part of that sentence means. Okay, whatever. Nice translation. As he waited for the pain in his fingers to help dull the pain in his mind. Mr. Otani, are you okay? He heard a voice he heard many times before and felt a concerned hand on his shoulder. He somehow managed to ignore the pain and open his eyes. A worried face was peering down at him. Y yeah, I'm fine. This just happens lately. Overwork, perhaps? You've been so busy lately. You shouldn't push yourself too hard. You're always a warrior, I'm fine, come in. 
He opened his mouth as wide as he could and moaned, trying to ease the pain as he let his important guests inside. As he turned his back to his guests, he told himself that it had been a long time since he'd seen them, or maybe not. It couldn't have been more than two months since they'd last met. Who? It only felt long because he'd wanted to see them so badly. Alright, it was nice of you to come by, but I'm streaming. While he was out here, he decided he would cut some trees for himself and his guests. Oh, don't worry about us. No, I can't do that to you guys. Hmm. What's wrong? No, it's nothing. The blade wasn't coming into the trees. That's strange, he told himself as he pushed down with more force. He cut into its, su into its surface and made an unpleasant sound he'd never heard before, but no matter how hard he pushed, it wouldn't go further. Has he cut into his finger? <coughs> Confused, he yanked the knife back and forth like a saw, but only cut slightly deeper. It was as if there was something hard inside the cheese. Oh, he's cut into his hand! And even though he'd only... Oh, God. And even though he'd only taken it out of the fridge, it was slightly warm. <laughs> Damn it. What's going on with this thing? Irritated, he slammed the handle of the knife against the cheese. But all he did was bash it in a little. He couldn't cut through it. God damn it. I'll help you. His guests must have heard the sound because they rushed over. They had another knife. When did they get that out? There's a trick to cutting this thing. That does not sound nice. They put the knife up against the cheese and began to move it with a practiced hand. It sounds like your work is going well. They smiled at Otani, their voice is slightly low. Otani realised that they were trying to keep their voice from being picked up by the streaming microphone and lowered his voice as well. Ah. Yeah. He grinned and nodded. His guest has introduced him to a firm that handled advertising space for popular websites, which had been giving him regular work. His reputation had quietly spread throughout the small web advertising industry and soon he was getting more and more offers. This job's all about predicting trends, so it's perfect for me. I can't lose. Then why do you, st why do these streams? It's hard to say, I guess. You say I'm trying to see how far I can go. That's right. His power wasn't to be wasted on jobs that anyone could do. No one's done this before, so I can't ask anybody about it. You know. So I want to do everything I can by myself. Or am I sounding like a show-off? No, it's wonderful. I think and done. After he smacked it a few times, the cheese was a little funny looking, but even the slices were lined up neatly on the plate. What's he cut? Sorry to make you help like that. It's nothing. Go on. I'll wait until your stream is finished. Thanks. If you want something from the fridge, grab it, but... Oh, but be quiet. What is that? That's not cheese. A time took his cheese back to his seat and sat in the floods of comments read, he's late. Did he log off? What should have only been three minutes had turned into more than fifteen. Otani put a bite of the cheese in his mouth and began to chew loudly. That doesn't look like that's not cheese, is it? So sorry, I had this cheese in sale and it's so incredibly hard. He apologised to the camera, remembering to keep up the act of being poor and starving. As he hoped, the comments started to come in. This is weird. I reported the broadcast will end soon. This is making me sick. What happened? I'm very worried. Stop, it's disgusting. I can't read the comments or watch this. I, I can only laugh. What? Hmm? Otani's face took on a confused expression. The comments were strange. He thought there might be something on the camera, but he turned around and saw only his fake poor room. Um, is something wrong? He spoke into the camera, but the comments still didn't make any sense, and they weren't and they were coming in faster. Maybe there was a problem with the camera. He reached his right hand out towards it. In an instant, his headache was back. <laughs> It was the same pain as before. No, worse. He closed his eyes and jerked forward, banging his head against the desk. But the pain in his head was so bad that he didn't even feel it. He tried to hold his head in his hands, but for some reason his right hand wouldn't move. So instead he pushed his other hand up against his temple. He's cut his right hand off, hasn't he? It felt squishy. The vein was incredibly swollen and it felt like rubber. And each, each time he felt his blood pulse through it, it was unpleasant sensation in his fingers. <laughs> He stamped his feet against the floor, hoping to find some small escape from the pain. But it didn't even get slightly better. It was then that he realised he was crying. 
He couldn't feel the tears coming from his eyes. The pain was moving there now, too. <laughs> Unable to bear it, he opened his eyes. It's not going to be... He gasped. The whole scene appeared in front of him like some kind of awful magic trick. What's going on? He suddenly heard the sound of something wet dripping onto the floor. His eyes reflectively turned towards it. His right arm was gone at the elbow and the stump was gushing blood. There was a pool of it on the floor and the sound he heard from the new blood splattering onto it. <gasps> Otani didn't understand what had happened to him. What was going on? He'd just gone to check and knock on the door. <laughs> the pain screamed within him. Any sense of pain in what remained of his right arm was overcome by the pain in his head. He felt nothing from his arm at all, though he saw the blood dripping onto the floor. What the hell was going on? He blinked and forced his aching eyes to function as he looked around the room. Oh, I was right. It was his arm. Well, I thought it was hand, but on top of his desk he found the rest of his arm. It was sitting on a plate. At first it looked like it was still in one piece, but it wasn't. It was neatly sliced into uniform pieces. Each piece was about a centimetre wide and the slices moved neatly towards his fingers. They sat upon the plate in roughly his arm's original shape. Miraculously, he saw there was no blood on the tip of his index finger. He still didn't understand that it was really his own arm. But sheer disgust at what he saw caused him to leap out of his chair. What was this? What kind of prank was this? The contents of his stomach flooded into his mouth, he vomited. The pink fluid splashed across the, the desk. Ugh. He saw something solid in the middle of it. It was a thumb. It was covered in bite marks, saliva and stomach acid, but horribly he remembered it. What? When had he put that into his mouth? In his painful mind, he suddenly heard a sound he never heard before. Each time he heard the sound, the pain in his head got worse. He turned towards the camera, hoping for an answer to what was happening. But of course, there was none to be found. The screen was still filling with comments, but his eyes were too filled with tears for him to read them. As the whole world turned red, Otani didn't even realise his lips were turning purple. His lips had turned purple from lack of oxygen, but they were stained with red from the severed thumb which he had chewed himself. As he tried to fight the pain, he began to fall unconscious and tears fell from his eyes. The tears seemed pink to him. Otani was weeping blood. He died, still facing the camera. His guests watched a chain of events unfold, then silently headed for the door. Just before they left the room. Goodbye. They said as if nothing at all was wrong and shut the door. Well, what the fuck? Right. I think we'll end the episode here. If you like this video, don't forget to leave a like in the section below. If you want to see more of this, and do subscribe to the channel as I upload every day. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.